Thank you so much for joining us for CBN News Watch. I'm Ephraim Graham. Ahead today, Taiwan preparing for an invasion by China. We're going to show you how the people in Taiwan are getting ready to fight to protect their homeland, including using guerrilla tactics and urban warfare. Gearing up for 2024 Republican presidential candidates addressing evangelical Christians in Iowa. One key issue, how to deal with abortion. It's called Mommy Wine Culture. It's a marketing campaign to make mothers think they need more alcohol to cope with raising their children. It may sound like fun, but we're going to show you why it is deadly serious. And home from the sea, the aircraft carrier USS George H.W. Bush returns to the United States for emotional family reunions after eight months away from America. All those stories and more today on CBN Newswatch. This is CBN Newswatch. Let's begin this half hour in Asia, where Taiwan is getting ready for war with China, preparing for urban warfare and guerrilla tactics. Civilians are signing up for combat training in preparation for an invasion, and dozens of private companies are on the island offering classes to develop a core of civilian warriors. George Thomas brings us this story from Taiwan. For Carl Kuo, China's intention to take Taiwan by military force looks and feels more real with each coming day. Turn on the news, and almost every day you hear how tensions between China and Taiwan are escalating. The 24-year-old Taipei native runs this shop in a popular market area of the city. He says Beijing's military drill simulating a total blockade of Taiwan have his family thinking about how to prepare for war. We've discussed taking basic weapons training, getting more money out of the bank, storing some food supplies, and planning a possible escape route. Many here worry that if war comes, this thriving democracy in a strategic corner of Southeast Asia will be extinguished. We don't want to lose our way of life. Taiwan is a very friendly city, a very friendly island, and people are good to each other. It's a democratic society where the leader are elected, not by military force. Russia's invasion of Ukraine last year sent a chill across this island nation of 23 million people, with some drawing comparisons between Putin's obsession with taking over its neighbor and Xi Jinping's determination to annex Taiwan. A popular saying among people here is, Ukraine today, Taiwan tomorrow. Five generations of the Communist Party leaders had already always um, put unification as one of their priorities. Uh, they were incapable of delivering that, but Xi Jinping is a different person. And Xi Jinping um, believed that um, right now probably is the peak uh, of the Chinese power. And that's why many Taiwanese point to Ukraine's continued resistance against a much bigger invading army. The unity displayed by all Ukrainians has been inspiring to us. And it should also serve as a warning to China that they should think twice about attacking us. Polls show an overwhelming majority of people here, over 70 percent, willing to defend Taiwan against any China invasion. Taiwan has been paying very close attention ever since Russia began its military offensive against Ukraine back on February 24th. And as this island nation prepares for a potential invasion by her neighbor, China, the one thing they're focusing on, just like they did in Ukraine in the initial opening days of the war, is the idea of creating a Taiwanese civilian defense force. And that idea led to an explosion of private companies here offering defense classes to civilians. The key to the international community's intervention in the possible conflict in the Taiwan Strait is Taiwan's determination to defend itself. The war in Ukraine by Russia has confirmed such a theory. Only when the people have shown their strong determination to defend themselves and act on it can they convince the international community to help them. Record numbers are taking classes on how to provide first aid. At each session, we would ask trainees why they would attend first aid classes. Many would mention concerns about the war in Ukraine. So they start to ask themselves, I am a civilian. What can I do to help? What can I do for myself, for my family? Or what can I do for others? 
Others are learning urban guerrilla warfare tactics to protect their neighborhoods. Although I was enlisted for two years, I feel that what I've learned is insufficient to meet modern wars. So I found a place to train and enforce my knowledge. If one day something happens, I could probably be able to return home safe. Taiwan has only about 170,000 active soldiers, compared to China's nearly 2 million strong army, the largest in the world. The island nation, however, has a larger, well-trained military reserve force than China, numbering about 1.5 million, in case Beijing decides to attack. Still, Taiwanese businessman Robert Cao says that's not enough. The tech billionaire is pouring millions of his personal wealth into training and equipping some three million civilian warriors in the next three years to defend their island home. When I was, uh, Admiral Li Si Ming, former head of Taiwan's armed forces, tells CBN News that his nation needs an immediate move toward a resilient and united society like Ukraine to face a menacing and dangerous neighbor. If you really can develop this kind of the willingness, develop this kind of capabilities, then the, the enemy, uh, the China will consider even they can destroy the our Navy and the Air Force they successfully landed on our territory. They still need to fight against our regular forces and a lot of the uh, kind of a civilian defense forces. Last week, China and Taiwan held dueling military drills as tensions continue to rise, as China deployed several dozen ships and planes to simulate sealing off the island. Taiwan's army held exercises with tanks, armored vehicles and Humvees on the southern part of the island. This all comes as Beijing claims it is ready to fight foreign interference in the region, as well as any Taiwanese attempt to gain independence. George Thomas, CBN News, Taipei, Taiwan. Coming up, it may seem awful early, but the 2024 presidential race is getting underway in both parties, with Republicans appealing to evangelical Christians in Iowa over the weekend. We're going to have that story for you and more. It's all coming up when we come back. Your news channel, your shows, the stories you care about, anytime you want, anywhere you want. Download the CBN News app today. The presidential election is more than a year and a half away, but both parties are already gearing up. President Biden is expected to announce his re-election campaign possibly as soon as tomorrow. And multiple Republican candidates and potential candidates appeal to evangelical voters at a campaign event hosted by the Iowa Faith and Freedom Coalition on Saturday. One key issue, abortion, with the meeting coming just after the Supreme Court ruled to temporarily preserve access to an abortion pill. Former President Trump says he believes states should decide restrictions on abortion, but his vice president, Mike Pence, supports a national ban at 15 weeks of pregnancy. I don't agree with the former president who says this is a state's only issue. I think we have an opportunity to advance the sanctity of life, move it ever closer to the center of American law. Some polls have shown the public supporting a 15-week ban while others indicate voters are against it. One major issue in the election will be the war in Ukraine, and there have been some major developments on that front. As NATO's Secretary General visited Kyiv in a high-profile meeting with President Vladimir Zelensky last week, they discussed military and the possibility that Ukraine could one day join NATO itself. The meeting comes amid ongoing investigations into Russian war crimes and atrocities. CBN National Security Correspondent Caitlin Burke is on that story. Even before the war began, Russia's Vladimir Putin made clear his stance on Ukraine staying out of NATO. This week, a Kremlin spokesperson called any Ukrainian move to join the military alliance a serious, significant threat to Russia's national security. Meanwhile, NATO's secretary general sees Ukraine's membership as imminent. Let me be clear. Ukraine's rightful place is in the Euro-Atlantic family. Ukraine's rightful place is in NATO. And over time, our support will help you 
make this possible. The NATO leader's visit is symbolic of the alliance's commitment to helping Kyiv defend itself, support that will continue for as long as it takes. We must continue to strengthen Ukraine's armed forces, and we must ensure that robust, powerful arrangements are in place for Ukraine's security. In Washington, lawmakers heard firsthand testimony of Russian war crimes and human rights abuses. In January of this year, they came for me. And they took me to their torture chamber and kept me there uh, for five days. This was terrible. I was beaten, forced me to undress, cutting my body with a knife and threatening to rape and kill me also forced me to dig my own grave. Representative Mike McCall, chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, says Russia has made clear its intention to wipe out Ukraine's existence. These are more than war crimes. These are more than crimes against humanity. What we are witnessing in Ukraine is genocide. McCall also referred to the thousands of children kidnapped and deported to Russia. Tens of thousands of children have been kidnapped, handed over to Russian families, and forced into pro-Russian re-education systems. CBN News spoke with Natalia Kamyak of Orphan's Promise about the kidnappings. She says Vladimir Putin actually changed adoption laws to make it easier to place these children with Russian families. These children have been taken into summer camps. Um, they have been taken from orphanages. Uh, majority of them do have living parents or relatives. Lawmakers from both parties agree Russia is committing crimes against humanity in Ukraine. Meanwhile, with ongoing support from the U.S., NATO and other countries, Ukraine is expected to launch a counteroffensive against Russia this spring. Caitlin Burke, CBN News, Washington. Still ahead here at home, big numbers of new moms turning to alcohol, sipping wine during play dates at the park, drinking beer at the zoo with their children and more. We're going to take a look at the dangers of mommy wine culture. We've got that story for you right after this. It's called mommy wine culture. That's the catchphrase a marketing campaign targeting young mothers aims to convince them they need more alcohol to cope with pressures of raising children. Social media memes make it sound like it's harmless and fun, but CBN medical reporter Lori Johnson shows us why it's deadly serious. Wine gets better with age. I get better with wine. Okay, guilty. You girls know that's true. <laughs> we do. <laughs> the troubling messages often try to be humorous and appear on a number of products, from baby clothes with mommy drinks because I cry, to wine glasses with mommy sippy cup, T-shirts reading coffee, hockey mom, wine repeat, and even memes like the most expensive part of having kids is all the wine you have to drink. I think this messaging that is everywhere, um, it normalizes this behavior of drinking to survive parenthood. And it normalizes this idea that like drinking a lot is no big deal. As it turns out, the messaging sadly reflects reality. Kelly Manley turned to alcohol to fit in with her peers, who she observed drinking everywhere at kids' birthday parties, soccer practices, you name it. People would show up to the park with little, um, you know, discreet glasses of wine to have at, you know, 4 p.m. on a play date at the park. You know, you go to the zoo and for a small upcharge, you can buy a flight of beer, not just a beer but a flight of beer to enjoy while you're pushing your kid around the zoo. And like other events these days, it's going digital, like the Moms Who Need Wine Facebook group. Alcohol has been sold as the ultimate way to decompress, to cope, and to bond with other women, and it's very dangerous. The alcohol industry has certainly played a part. Back in the 90s, it ushered in the so-called pinking of the market making and advertising booze aimed specifically at women. Drink these sweetened, pre-sweetened, gorgeous, um, attractive pink drinks that will um, end you into drinking spirits, drinking pretty wine, drinking wine with names like, you know, uh, French rabbit. And it worked. While historically men consumed the most alcohol, women are now catching up. 
In the last 15 years, the greatest increase in consumption has been among women in their 30s and 40s. However, because of biological differences, women absorb more alcohol and take longer to metabolize it than men. That means the same amount of alcohol typically damages the female body more than the man's. After drinking the same amount of alcohol, women tend to have higher blood alcohol levels than men, and the effects usually occur more quickly and last longer in women. Alcohol also makes women more susceptible than men to liver disease, heart disease, cancer, and cognitive decline. U.S. health officials recommend women should drink no more than five ounces of wine a day. Canadian health officials go further, saying only two five-ounce glasses per week. This is a women's health issue. It's, in fact, a big public health issue. And it's not just physical. Alcohol affects mental health, too, which is why Kelly gave it up. It just exacerbated my feelings of anxiety and uh, depression, and I felt like I was betraying myself every time I drank. She's not alone. More moms are rejecting mommy wine culture and turning to groups like Sober Mom Squad. Having a safe space where you can talk to other moms about, you know, the questions you're having about alcohol or how difficult it is to navigate in this culture where everyone tells you you need to drink to be a parent um, and not have to justify that you should just be grateful to have kids. Many moms are also saying no because they're concerned about the culture's impact on their child's self-esteem. Most problematic part of it is what is it saying to your kids? Um, Again, if it's, you know, tongue in cheek jokes, like between friends, that's one thing. But when it you're wearing the T-shirt that said mommy needs wine, you know, saying that you have to, you know, I have to drink because you're difficult. Um, I think that leads into something that's even more damaging. So while pop culture and big alcohol try to convince new moms life is better with booze, a growing number are rejecting that message for the sake of their own health as well as their families. Lori Johnson, CBN News. Coming up, home from the sea, the aircraft carrier George H.W. Bush returns to the United States after serving America abroad for eight months. We're going to bring you a look at the emotional homecoming when we come back. Stay with us. After more than eight months at sea, the USS George H.W. Bush aircraft carrier returned to Naval Station Norfolk in Virginia this weekend. CBN's Mark Martin joined the happy homecoming and captured stories of faith and family. As the massive aircraft carrier made its way to port, its sailors lined the perimeter of the ship as excited family and friends anxiously waited. More than eight months is a long time away, and the reunions reflect that. This is our eighth deployment, uh, so she's been through eight deployments, 17 years of marriage. So uh, I would say that it, uh, it, it was routine, but it's never routine. It's always a joy to come back and see my family again. Uh, especially after eight and a half months. This is amazing. I mean, I, I haven't seen... That is your guy. I haven't seen this guy in... <laughs> ever. I mean, he was born on deployment. Um, so in the middle of deployment, I got to video chat with my wife. And this is the first time I get to see him. Rear Admiral Dennis Velez commands the entire Carrier Strike Group 10. I've been doing this for 31 years. This is my, you know, 10th deployment. And I just come in here uh, and, and seeing family, seeing the sailors, uh, seeing their families for the first time. It is, it is magical. It is really, uh, it is the best part of the deployment is coming home. About 5,000 sailors served on board the USS George H.W. Bush during this deployment. They worked with 26 countries, developing relationships with NATO allies and partners in both the Africa and Europe areas of operation. All a part of our effort to reinforce the strong relationship that we have with our NATO allies and to promote peace through strength and strength through unity. The strike group also participated in the largest bilateral U.S.-Israeli exercise in history. Units from the Army, the Air Force and the United States Navy uh, joined up with Israeli Defense Forces 
uh, and participated in a multi-domain, so air, maritime, and land warfare uh, exercises. Faith also played an important role in this deployment. Lieutenant Commander Brandon Hood serves as chaplain. Usually when our sailors show up to underway chapel services in the forecastle, we say welcome to the Great Awakening aboard George Herbert Walker Bush. It's usually filled to overflowing and we're very grateful for a rock band and gospel choir that combine forces every Sunday and just rock out and it's a very alive chapel service. I absolutely rededicated my life to Christ and I feel so, so good about it. I'm excited. I don't even know what, it's like there's no words to explain like what it's like to be like secretly praying declarations over your husband and for him to like email you and say I've accepted Jesus Christ into my heart. It just, it blew me away. I literally just like fell to my knees and was so excited just thanking God for it. CBN's Helping the Home Front, which partners with local churches to meet the needs of military families, took part in the celebration along with the Warriors Journey organization. Among the items handed out by the groups, gift bags, Bibles, and other resources. It's such an honor to be um, for CBN to have Helping the Home Front, that program, and to be able to reach out to all um, branches of the military and help families. We want to support them. They're out there fighting for our freedom, and we want them to know that we are here, um, right here in town, ready to serve them. And after a lengthy deployment, it's time now to catch up and soak up the love of family and friends. Mark Martin, CBN News, Naval Station, Norfolk, Virginia. Beautiful. Time now for your Monday Motivation. I pray you will join me in this thought of inspiration for the day and the week, exceedingly abundantly above. Three simple words, but they are God's promise to you. It's what he will do in your life when you trust him and obey him, exceedingly abundantly and above all you could ask or think. With those words, make this a marvelous Monday and be sure to have yourself a wonderful week. That is going to do it for this edition of CBN News Watch. You can always find more of our programs on the CBN News Channel. You can find them there at any time as well as online, cbnnews.com. We'd love to know what you think about the stories you've seen here today. You can email us, newswatch at cbn.com. And, of course, you can always reach out and touch us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Hope you'll join us again right here next time. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Goodbye. God bless.